space weapons. Brings to mind a Star Wars scene, right? Spaceships battling, astronauts fighting with lethal laser guns, destroying planets and what not. This whole scenario might seem very far-fetched in the real life, but one cannot completely rule out the possibilities of space conflicts. Weaponization of space, a highly debatable topic in the international community, is the placement and developing of weaponry and military technology in outer space. The idea of utilizing outer space for weaponizing was first conceived during the Cold War times, but space is different from what it was 50 years ago. Most of the world's communications and defense systems rely heavily on the presence of satellites orbiting around the Earth. Protecting these assets might seriously motivate nations dependent upon them to consider deploying more space-based weaponry. Space has been eyed up as a military asset almost since the beginning of the space race. The volume of space between low Earth orbit and geostationary orbit is about 200 trillion cubic kilometers. That is 190 times larger than the volume of Earth. This opens up immense strategic possibilities for various nations around the globe. Project Horizon of the United States, which was a 1959 study to determine the feasibility of constructing a scientific or military base on the moon, allegedly included setting up of a nuclear launch station on the moon. Well, before going deep in this topic, a subscribe from your side will help us stay motivated to make more videos like this. So please, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Now the question arises, is it going to be like something that we watch in movies? I am sorry to disappoint you, but that's not going to be the case. Any conflict in space will be much slower and more deliberate than a Star Wars scene. It requires a lot more long-term thinking and strategic placements of assets. Don't expect a direct action between astronauts or robots. A space war may be fought by Earth to space missiles, directed energy weapons, or hacking satellites. A frontline space war soldier could be a state-sponsored hacker sitting at a computer terminal sending rogue commands to confuse or shut down an enemy satellite. So what? There are thousands of nuclear warheads on our planet anyway. What greater harm could another set of weapons do? Well, apart from being hideously expensive and energy-consuming, a full-fledged destruction of satellites and space vehicles could trigger a chain reaction that swiftly surrounds the Earth with belts of debris. Swirling fragments of the space junk may get trapped in orbit around Earth, threatening our future in space missions. Although most debris that enter the atmosphere burn up, larger debris objects can reach the ground intact and cause large-scale damage. You must have frequently heard this law of motion by Newton that every action has equal and opposite reaction. Well, that's true even for space weapons. Any normal kinetic weapon can't be fired outside the atmosphere as the recoil would be uncontrollable in the absence of gravity. The recoil on a missile launching system could be enough to throw the satellite out of its orbit. Even if we wanted to use such a weapon, the size of space station on which the weapon is placed has to be huge. So there is another class of weapon, known as directed energy weapons, that offer negligible recoil when compared to kinetic weapons. Directed energy weapons are almost unaffected by gravity, windage and Coriolis force, giving it an almost perfectly flat trajectory, making them an ideal contender in the space weapon race. The future of warfare is in space. A future conflict may not start in space, but we are in no doubt that it will transition very quickly into it. Are these apprehensions justified? Only time will tell.